The series begins when paramedics are helping people after a horrible accident. At the same time, the main character, Yukuse, sees his own body lying in front of him while paramedics give him CPR. Hopeless, they put the body in the ambulance while Yukuse's friend Keiko comes crying and sits in the ambulance. He could not understand what was happening until a man passed through the middle of his body. Only then will he know that he is dead. The scene shifts to what happened in the city four hours ago. Yukuse was sitting on the school's rooftop when Keiko came and asked him to attend the class. She insists because teachers would scold her too, as they know they are childhood friends. After throwing his cigarette, Yukusi gets up. As he takes the stairs to go to the class, Yukusi sees a few students assaulting Kirino. They demand money, which he gives and beats. Then, they return to search Kirino's pocket. Yukusi could not see this and hit the boy to return Kirino's money. Suddenly, a teacher sees him, and it looks like Yukusi is stealing the money. Without clearing his position, Yukusi comes out of there. A round worm fly that entered the city earlier has reached the streets. Yukuse walks towards his home, where his mom watches TV. She tells him to start earning and take responsibility if he is not interested in studying. After giving coffee to his mom, Yukusi comes out of the home in a very bad mood, and Kuwabara and his friends are already waiting for him to resume yesterday's fight. Yukuse beats all of them and sees a little boy playing with the ball affectionately. Then he enters the restaurant. At the same time, the round warm fly enters the nose of a truck driver waiting in the long queue of traffic jams. Suddenly, he started the truck and hit many vehicles. On the other hand, Keiko and her friends enter the restaurant. After her friends leave, Keiko scolds him for not clearing his position in front of the teacher. But Yukuse leaves her there as she angrily shouts and gets on the road. Suddenly, he sees the truck racing towards them. The same kid was about to get hit by the truck, but Yukuse jumped and threw him away. But in doing so, he sacrifices his own life. There is a barrier between the human world and the demon world, made by the spirit world. Sometimes, Yokoi from the demon world crosses the barrier. The roundworm fly is the Yokoi monster that made the truck driver mad. As Yukuse walks on the street, he meets Botai, a messenger from the spirit world. On the other hand, the boy Yukuse saved did not get any scratches on his body. Botai takes Yukuse to the spirit world on a boat. They meet the son of Enma's boss, Koenma. They see him deciding the fate of deceased souls by throwing them into hell or heaven. He offers Yukuse that if he helps find Yokoi and why they came into the world, he will give Yukuse another chance to live. Yukuse refuses the chance of resurrection as he thinks everyone will be happy at his death. But Botai asks him to go and see what his loved ones are doing before deciding what to do. Yukuse sees that Kuwabara and Kirino are so sad at his funeral. While bad guys once again beat Kirino for coming to his funeral, after everyone goes, his mom and Keiko cry, hugging each other as they miss him. As Yukuse comes outside, he sees that the same guys are beating Kirino to death and are about to burn him. Suddenly, roundworm Yokoi gets in Kirino's ear and he begins acting like the devil. He beats those guys and sets the place on fire. Kuwabara and his friends also reached out there to see what was happening. Yukuse visits Keiko at home and wipes her tears. He decides that he will accept the resurrection offer. But Koenmo tells him that his house is on fire. At the same time, Yukusa's mom is crying outside the home as she feels that her son is alive and breathing inside. Keiko hears it and runs inside the house. She gets unconscious from the smoke while she tries to push Yukusa's body outside. Yukusi gets power from Koenmo and resurrects. He brings Keiko out of the house, and his mom is surprised to see him. Yukusi does not stop and runs to get the wasp out of Kirino's body. Kirino beats Kuwabara and his friends so much that they fall unconscious. He beats Kirino so much, but his negative energy does not allow Yokoi out. Yukusi reminds him that he is brave and stands up against bullies. Then Koenmo gives him spirit energy. That comes from his fist. As soon as Yukusi hits Kirino's face with full force, Yokoi comes out and smashes it immediately. Yukusi goes home. Keiko and his mom hugged him with immense joy upon his refund. Next up, Koenmo is planning to bring Yukusi against bigger demons. Those demons have pulsating black matter in different shapes. A man sits on the bench when a little girl sees a pulsating black ball in his hand. 
She asks what it is, and suddenly, a whirlwind comes and kills everyone there. The soul from the girl's body comes out and enters the pulsating ball. Yukuse learns to use the spirit gun using spirit energy, but he fails to concentrate. That's the only way to kill three yokai. Suddenly, Koenmo sees on his screen that several kids have fallen unconscious. They were playing in a complex in front of a building. Yukusi goes to the hospital and watches those kids on life support. Returning their eaten souls is the only way to bring those kids back to normal life. Kuwabara also comes to the same hospital to apologize to his injured friends. While going out, he sees Yukuse and asks how he managed to win against the strong guy last night. Yukusi tells the truth. Yokai entered the guy, and he used his spirit energy to kill him. Botan scolds and pushes him away. She advises Yukuse to hide the truth. Suddenly, Kuwabara's friends tell him they did not see any girls with Yukuse. That makes Kuwabara believe that the girl that only Yukuse and Kuwabara are seeing is not human. And Yukuse is telling the truth about Yokai. Botan informs him that Goki sucks children's souls and captures them inside the rapacious orb. Yukuse tells Botan that he can't fight Goki, one of the yokai before he eats something. He enters Keiko's restaurant where he meets the kid he saved. He thanks him and tells him many kids collapsed today in front of their complex. He asks for the address and goes there. Suddenly, Yukuse saw Goki and began following him. They reach an area with a total of useless vehicles. Goki changes his disguise into that of a monster and begins attacking Yukuse. Yukuse keeps hitting and saving himself from the multiple attacks. Another yokai Kurama watches them fight and does not interrupt. At last, Goki grabs Yukusa's neck when the kid Masaru comes and asks Goki to stop it. Goki picks up his orb and sucks Masaru's soul. He falls unconscious. Yukusi hits Goki as he is about to eat Masaru's soul and uses his spirit gun to kill Goki. He dies, and along with Masaru's soul, all the kids' souls return to their bodies. Wealthy and greedy businessman Tarukani kept a girl in the cage. He touches the girl's arm, and she begins crying. She shed a tear of ice, which Takarain saved with immense joy. Then he paid a good deal for that tear. But as he goes, the man guarding that cage puts a bandage on the wound and promises the girl that soon he will set her free. Kuwabara begins following Yukuse. Botan shares that Korama has a mirror of darkness. He can make any wish on the full moon that will be granted. So they must stop him before the full moon. Kuwabara is astonished to see Botan disappear in front of his eyes. Yukuse walks into the market, and suddenly, he sees Korama. He begins following him. Korama gets a flower and reaches the hospital to give it to the sick mom. While Koenmo thinks that Kurama is trying to get sympathy by showing the wrong side of his personality, Kurama comes out of the hospital and says that he entered his mom's fertilized egg, and in 17 years, he developed a strong love for his mom. Even as a yokai, he wants to use his wish to save his dying mom's life. Botan begins crying as she sees their love. Yukusi discusses with Keiko how to decide if a person is good or bad. She tells him to use his judgment. So, he decides to judge based on his understanding. At the same time, Botan tells him that Korama will die if he uses his wish. Kuwabara meets him in the street and tells him that he will stop Yukuse, at all costs, from protecting a yokai like Korama. Yukuse begins running towards the hospital before Korama makes his wish for the full moon tonight. Korama has already made his wish, and Yukuse jumps into the cloud. He pledges his half-life to Korama's mother. Because he knows that even if Kurama gives his life, his mom will never be happy without him. The wish is fulfilled, and Kurama's mom is perfectly fine. Kuwabara apologizes to Yukuse for stopping him from helping Kurama. Yukuse accepts the apology with an open heart. On the other hand, the third yokai Hiei steals the ice from the car using the conjuring blade. After getting a command from Koenmo, Yukuse goes to the jeweler's mansion to find Hiei's blade. Koenmo tells him to be cautious. Suddenly, the people start firing bullets. Hiei arrives in the mansion to find his sister Korimi, who sheds an ice tear, which is valuable for Jews. He kills many guards. Yukuse tries to attack him from behind to get his conjuring blade and return to the spirit world. But without much effort, Hiei defeats him, and Yukuse's spirit energy does not work at all. On the other hand, Jeweler reaches Sakio's safe place with Korimi. Sakyo shows him his yokai monsters. 
After seeing their fight, he appoints the most powerful yokai as the Jews' guard. He allows Sakio to keep Korime's cage in a safe place. But as they keep it in lockup and look inside, they see that Korime has escaped. Korime's guard tries to take her out of the cage with a helicopter. But a yokai stops them and kills the guard. As Korime cries, Jeweler gets many valuable ice teats. Afterwards, Botan sends Yukusei to a training camp across the mountains. Kuwabara hears their conversation and insists he will also join the training. They meet Master Genkai, who will train Yukusei about using the spirit energy. She gets so angry when Yukusei thinks he has every skill to fight Hiei. He begins a one-on-one -on -one fight with Master Genkai. She defeats him without using her hand. Ultimately, he falls, slipping on a walnut. On the other hand, Kuwabara practices on his own, using a wood stick on a rock. Master Genkai warns him that if he shows interest, Kuwabara will become more powerful and take him back to training. That day, Korama asks Hiei to return his conjuring blade to Yukusei. He thinks Yukusei can help them find his sister in return, but Hiei disagrees. On the other hand, businessman Sakyo is funding a reactor that will open a hole big enough between the human and demon worlds, and which will ultimately join both worlds. Master Genkai tells Yukusei that she is done training him because he can't learn. After that, Yukusei sees that Kuwabara has not stopped training, even though his hands are bleeding. Suddenly, spirit energy emerges from his wooden stick, and ultimately, Kuwabara successfully breaks the big stone with the wooden stick. That encourages Yukusei, and he concentrates on training once again. On the 20th day, he stands upside down on the tip of his spirit energy. After that, Master Genkai brings him outside and asks Yukusei to shoot a spirit gun. He successfully does it. So, as a reward, Master Genkai gives him a spirit wave. That gets absorbed in Yukusei's body. She announces that training ends here. Yukusei and Kuwabara leave her house, promising they will return for another training session. That night, a man comes to Master Genkai's house and gets angry that she gave the spirit wave orb to an ordinary kid. He challenges her to fight with him. When Yukusei goes to Keiko's restaurant to eat noodles, afterwards, Yukusei comes out and he hears a strange noise from the restaurant door. Then he sees Hiei kidnapping Keiko. He runs after them. They escape his sight, but he finds Hiei near Jeweler's mansion. They begin to fight as Yukusei accuses him of kidnapping his friend. At the same time, Keiko sees a man come in front of her in the face of Hiei, but then his face disfigures. Kurama stops Yukusei and Hiei from fighting and tells them that someone else kidnapped Keiko. That man also kidnapped Hiei's sister. They put Keiko in the cage next to Korime. Yukusei, Kurama, Kuwabara, and Hiei reach the secret island, where both girls are kept after kidnapping. On the other hand, the man who entered Master Genkai's home killed her. Sakyo watches Yukusei and his companions get on the boat with his men. On the boat, Yukusei thinks that whoever kidnapped Keiko is not human. Sakyo's man tells him his friend is safe with them on the island. Sakyo plays the game with Jeweler, winning every time with a coin. Then he puts five bullets in the gun and puts them on his head. He is so lucky that he survived. He says that he will finally end his boredom after the recent victory. As they reach the island, Hiei separates from the rest of them to find his sister. Suddenly, someone stops Kurama. The long-haired yokai wants to know why Kurama has become so fond of keeping friends. Kurama tells Yukusei to go, as he will fight this one alone. While Hiei reaches the inside area of the building, suddenly, a metal armor-wearing yokai comes in. The fight begins between them. At the same time, millionaires inside Sakio's house watch both fights on screen and bet on their favorite players. While Yukusei and Kuwabara reach the inner area of the house, they find both Keiko and Korime. Korime tells Keiko that the man who kidnapped her is a real yokai. She sees a wound on Keiko's hand, and she heals the wound entirely in a moment. Korime tells the truth about herself. She is a yokai too. On the other hand, if Korama defeats the other fighter, he will get the human body in return. But the opponent attacks him so harshly that he ultimately takes his real yokai form. With his power, Korama grows killer plants that attack yokai with his movement. While yokai is fighting with Hiei, he removes his armor to fight with full force. At the same time, Keiko pretends that she is in pain. 
As a guard opens her cage, she beats him and frees herself. Then, she forces Karima to run with her. With a bit of reluctance, she agrees to run out. Yoki manages to free himself from the killer plants and beats Korama until he bleeds. Sakyo sees on CCTV that both girls have escaped from the jail. They meet Kuwabara at a corner. Kuwabara gets mesmerized by Korime's beauty. While Hiei falls down after his opponent, Yokai bets him a lot. But he gets up again and uncovers his hand to make a secret dragon fire. That fire dragon's arm burns Yokai badly. Then Hiei leaves him there to go ahead. On the other hand, Korama injures the hand of opponent Yokai with a plant. That grows inside him secretly. As Korama utters the word die, Yokai explodes and dies. As Kuwabara opens a door to escape, they free a Yokai monster. Keiko pulls the emergency switch to escape the area and shuts the door. Then they run into the face changing Yokai, who kidnapped Keiko. Yukuse reaches into the hall room, where he hears Sakio's voice. He will get his friend back if he defeats Toguro. He is the same person who killed Master Genkai. At the same time, a man tells me that a wormhole is now open that will connect the human and demon worlds. Businessmen watch Yukuse and Toguro fight, and they bet a lot of money. Suddenly, they break the things in their room, too. After getting a lot of beating, Kuwabara changes his sword to spirit energy and slices the other yokai. But then it rose up again and strangled Kuwabara. Koenma makes a barrier between the human and demon worlds, so they don't join again. But it can't hold for long. So Koenma comes to stop him from joining both worlds. But Sakio does not agree. They make an agreement that Sakio will die if his man, Toguro, loses. While Toguro will fight and defeat Yukusei and his companions to keep the wormhole open, while Sakio sees Korime and Keiko escaping, Jeweler tries to run out, but a monster, Yokai, gets him. Yukusei throws Toguro across the wall using a spirit gun, but he comes back completely healed. Sakio opens a door, and Keiko enters the area where Yukusei and others are fighting. Yokoi gets so happy to see Yukusei and his friends lose. He tells them that Toguro and Genkai were friends. They learned martial arts, and Toguro sold his soul to demons to preserve his youth and power. After Genkai gave her precious spirit orb, Toguro killed her. Toguro disliked hearing that he had sold his soul, so he killed the yokai and told the story. Yukuse remembers his master, Genkai, and begins attacking Toguro. Using his spirit orb, he throws Toguro and makes a hole in the ground with his power. From that hole, Toguro emerges once again and begins throwing bullets towards Yukusei. Sakyo tells Koenmo that he put a bet on Yukusei because he always knew he would win. While Toguro gets the shape of a muscular, huge man, he tries to warm up Yukusei by hitting Keiko. Then he beats Kuwabara so hard by punching him in his stomach. Suddenly, Yukusei punches Toguro and throws him away. Toguro offers him to leave his friends and join him. But Yukusei throws his spirit gun in full force at Toguro. It burns him. Toguro dies after I tell him he had a real fight for the first time. Korime tells Kuwabara that she likes him. Afterwards, Hiei gives his conjuring blade to the spirit world. Sakyo loses the bet and commits suicide. Hiei and Korime talk on their way out, and Hiei gives her a necklace of ice tears. He shares that he is no longer the same brother she is looking for. Toguro goes on his path to eternity and meets Genkai there. She wants him to be with her, but he walks away alone. Kuwabara and Korima became great friends. Keiko thanks Yukusei for saving them. The series ends here.